Hello, hello, I'm Brunton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Welcome to today's video on relative and absolute configuration in stereochemistry. Grasping these concepts is crucial for your MCAT preparation as they play a significant role in understanding molecular properties and have important biological implications. So what does this mean? It's spanning the chem phys and a little bit of bio biochem. So let's dive on in. Stereoisomers are molecules with the same molecular formula and connectivity, but have different spatial arrangements. They can be broadly classified into enantiomers and diastereomers. Understanding the difference between these types of stereoisomers is fundamental to mastering relative and absolute configuration. Relative configuration refers to the spatial arrangement of atoms or groups of a molecule compared to another molecule. It allows us to classify stereomolecules as their enantiomers, which are non-superimposable mirror images with opposite configurations at all stereocenters, or diastereomers, which are stereoisomers that are not mirror images and have different configurations at one, but not all stereocenters. This classification helps us understand the relationships between stereoisomers and their distinct properties, such as reactivity, melting point, boiling points. Absolute configuration is a system that assigns a unique descriptor to each stereocenter with a molecule. The widely used Kahn Ingold Prelog or CIP SIP system assigns R and S designations based on a set of rules. To assign R or S configurations, we want to follow these steps. First, we want to identify the stereo center of this molecule. In this case, it's the one in the middle. Then we want to assign priority to the atoms directly attached to the stereo center based on their atomic number. The higher the atomic number, the higher priority. So since bromine is the highest number, we put a little one there. Chlorine is the second highest, we put it two and carbon next three, and hydrogen, very small, so it's going to have our lowest priority. If we have tied atomic numbers, we would move along the chain until we find a point of difference. And then we want to trace a path from the highest to the lowest priority. So let's check this with the S enantiomer. So we draw a circle from one, two, to three. It's clockwise, we're moving clockwise right now. And then we want to check with the atom pointing at us. If that's the lowest priority, we have to flip it. Because this is not the lowest priority, we can keep this and say this is S configuration. Now for the R enantiomer, we've got one, two, and three here. So we're going to be going in the same direction again. But in this case, we do have the lowest priority sticking out at us. So we have to flip the stereochemistry into the R configuration. Applying the SIP system gives a clear, unambiguous description of the molecule's stereochemistry. And here are the rules on that. If you just want to grab a screenshot, I find it helpful to have. Another nice tip you're going to want to know for the MCAT is if two things are mirror images of each other and they can't be superimposed, then they are enantiomers. But if things are mirror images of each other, but they can be rotated to go on top of each other or be superimposed, those are not enantiomers. This top one can be a really good quick check to do on the MCAT. If you have four different groups bound to one center group, and if you can find a mirror of, you can find a, you can place a mirror between them and they look like mirror images, then you found yourself two enantiomers. It's also critical to understand Fisher projections and easy nomenclature as a way to represent stereochemistry. Start with Fisher projections. These are a convenient way to depict the 3D spatial arrangement of atoms and molecules typically used for carbohydrates and some amino acids. In Fisher projections, the horizontal lines represent bonds that project out of the plane towards the viewer, while vertical lines represent bonds that extend away from the viewer into the plane, so wedges and dashes, respectively. This representation allows for easy visualization of the relative configuration and substituents around a chiral center, with the most oxidized carbons placed at the top. Fisher projections are named D or L based on the hydroxyl groups on the right or the left of the bottom carbon, respectively. On the other hand, easy nomenclature is used to describe the stereochemistry of alkenes, where restricted rotation around a double bond causes geometric isomers. The E from the German word entigen, meaning opposite, and Z from the German word zusamenen, meaning together. Notation is again based on that can and gold prelog priority rules, which assigns priority to substituents based on their atomic number. In the E configuration, the two highest priority substance substituents on each carbon of the double bond are on opposite sides of the bond. 
While on the Z configuration, these substituents are on the same side. Understanding Fisher projections and easy nomenclature is vital for accurately representing and interpreting molecular structures and stereochemistry in organic chemistry, especially when it comes to carbohydrates. Thank you so much for watching this video on relative and absolute configurations, and I will see you next time.